While portions of the Bible had been translated into English by the 1380s, mostly from the Psalms and the Gospels, it was John Wycliffe who was credited with producing the first handwritten English Bible manuscripts. He was an English theologian, lay preacher, translator, reformist, and Oxford professor. He was well known throughout Europe for his opposition to the teaching of the Roman Catholic Church, which he believed to be contrary to the Bible. He is considered the founder of the Lollard Movement, a precursor to the Protestant Reformation. For this reason, he is sometimes called the Morning Star of the Reformation. Wycliffe was also an early advocate for the translation of the Bible into the common tongue. He completed his translation directly from the Latin Vulgate into vernacular English in the year 1382. He lived nearly a century before Gutenberg invented the printing press, therefore his New Testaments and Bibles were handwritten manuscripts. Because Wycliffe's translation was Middle English, like Chaucer's The Canterbury Tales, it is not easy for modern readers, and since each Bible or portion was copied by hand, they vary greatly in size, shape, and format. Some are large Bibles with elaborately decorated initials and fine bindings. Others are small with text in one column so that itinerant laudate preachers could carry them easily. From the information board, notice that John 1 begins with the illuminated letter I on the left manuscript and at the decorative letter I on the right manuscript. For comparison, the text of the Wycliffe translation is typed out in an easy-to-read modern type with the original spellings and wordings preserved. With the help of his followers, his assistant John Purvey, and many other faithful scribes, John Wycliffe produced dozens of English copies of the scriptures. The Pope was so infuriated by Wycliffe's teaching and his translation of the Bible into English that 44 years after he died, the Pope ordered Wycliffe's bones to be dug up, burned, crushed, and scattered in the river. The woodcut shown on the information board is the same as was in the first volume of Fox's Book of Martyrs. As mentioned earlier, since Wycliffe's Bibles were handwritten, they varied in size, shape, and format. On display is a large facsimile leaf from an early Wycliffe Bible, a smaller 1385 Bible facsimile, and a more decorative 1395 facsimile edition. Also in 1731, a reprint of Wycliffe's 1378 New Testament manuscript was produced in a modern, easier to read type. It preserves the original Middle English spellings and wordings 100% faithfully, but it simply makes the text easier to read by rendering the text as a typeface rather than being handwritten. This 1731 publication of the scripture in English is the first printed edition of the first English translation of God's Word. It is an extremely important milestone in not only the printing history, but also the biblical history. Only 160 copies of this book were printed in 1731, and fewer than 10 of them are known to exist today. They are valued at close to $100,000 each. While Wycliffe is not listed specifically as one of the English translations mentioned by the translators of the King James Bible, it nonetheless contributed to the text of the Bible. Shown is Wycliffe's legacy, sound English words that were introduced in the text of his Bible and preserved in the King James Bible. Notice the roots of John 3.16 and the powerful language of Romans 6.23, for the wages of sin is death. Many of the English Bible facsimiles on exhibit are open to Luke 4.4. 4. In the King James Bible it reads, And Jesus answered him, saying, It is written, that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. See if you can follow the growth and development of this one verse in the historic English Bibles that are on exhibit. Look carefully. They would be a little difficult to find in the earlier Bibles because numbered verses were not printed in it, English Bible until 1557.